Hi guys, um, it's quite a lot of video to go through today, so I've, I've kept it pretty, uh, pretty, uh, got the speed up on each of the videos. Uh, but today was a really, really good day. Uh, I went from Flores, which I stayed near Flores, and and then ended up going to um, a place called Antigua, which is a old colonial um, settlement area. Uh, quite a beautiful place and there's a lot of volcanoes around there um, yeah so um, today I was I'm going to talk about you know not only the trip but also um, uh, cameras that that I've been using and the reasons why I use the cameras and I'll put links to all the different cameras that I use uh, in the in the uh, below the description um, so the trip today, I'll talk about that to begin with. You know, again, I left at first light. And as you can see, whenever you're coming up to trucks or topes, uh, even though it looks like I'm going fairly fast here, I'm not. And you go through some little cities like this. Um, even though, um, so when you see, when, when you're on a trip like this and you see there's a lot of topes, like the trucks go very, very slow over them. Because I mean, th these guys have been, these guys got to drive over these every single day, every single day of the year, for, for you know, you know, So they know the damage that, that that can do to the trucks. So whenever you see trucks in towns or around towns, as long as you're going at a reasonably slow pace, you can overtake a lot of them through the through the cities, um, because they slow right down and they, all the cars sit behind. You just got to be careful that cars don't jump out in front of you to go around the trucks as well. Um, but to this, the, as I said in previous videos, these are my roads. I love these roads. You know, you've got people on the sides of the road, um, people jumping in and out um, with carts and horses and all that sort of stuff. Um, and and be, you get a bit of a break because, as you can see, I, you go through a lot of little towns, and that's what I loved about the Guatemala roads was even though they were pretty pretty dangerous in places where with the roadworks they um because I, I, as i mentioned in previous videos they have one crew that cuts the road up so where there's a pothole they cut it up into a hole a nice big square hole and then they have another crew that comes through and put, relays the tarmac on top so what you have is you 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 can be driving around a corner and all they've got is a water bottle there to let you know there's a there's a hole most of them are only about an inch an inch deep so they're not so bad but some of them were a lot deeper and they can be treacherous you know so once you know that you just got it always in your mind so when you're going around the corners you're sort of like you're not going crazy you know you're you're, you're taking your time with them another thing that they do is um, is they paint they paint lines around sort of dangerous corners and so when they get wet the lines are really thick and they can be really slippery you know so you've got to be really careful of that, so, of that as well. So whenever you see lines coming into a corner, you're just trying to keep the bike straight. You're not trying to lean at all because uh, you, you can lose out the, the back of the bike and even the front can wash out as well if, you, if, you, if you're if you not controlling it correctly. So it's just it's just a matter of being aware. You know, on the straightaways, like this is really rough stuff here, you know, and you get a lot of this. But on the straightaways, you can give it a bit, a bit of the beans. But in the corners, I always, you know, I would always suggest just being a little bit careful. You know, the, the, the trucks on the road for me, for my whole trip, most of the time they were all fantastic, you know, letting you know when you can pass, uh, pulling over to the side. It's the buses that were, the buses that were a nightmare. And you'll see uh, in Guatemala and, and a lot of the Central American countries, uh, there's a lot of like makeshift taxis. A lot of people are just trying to make a few bucks however they can. So they'll have pickup trucks and they'll have like 12 people in them. Um, and, and the one surprising thing, as I said in a previous video as well, was just the amount of armed forces was, was quite, quite amazing. I mean, just the amount that I saw, you know, as, as I went, I, so, you know, I wonder if it's just a jobs program or, or, or whatever it is, but, uh, yeah, so um, th this this trip was going to, um, it's basically just outside of Guatemala City 
and um, even though it was a little bit misty and hazy in the morning, it was it turned out to be a really really beautiful day, and um, and I had a I had a I had a great ride today. Um, the total the total ride for the day was was um, over 11 hours, um, and I had about 520 something kilometres to cover, um, but at the same time, you know. Uh, you know, when you're riding, when you've got you're riding up and down mountains through little villages like this, where you, where you can stop over and have a bit of a break and stuff like that, and you know, some of these are main roads. Some of the times I just take a little bit of a detour, and here I am, uh, this little place at lunch. The flies were a friggin' nightmare, but it was a it was a um, it was pretty delicious. It was fish. So here I'm getting stopped over. The guy asked me about my bike. I think I had to give, I think here they, I had to, this is the first time ever, so he asked me a couple of questions, so as soon as he starts asking questions, off comes the helmet, and basically he wanted to see my, um, my, all my details, and I've got everything in my backpack, so my passport, my import permit, everything, and, and another uh, smart, so you can see the plastic bag, so I've got everything divided up within there, so I know I've got all my, uh, import permits or every, anything to do with that country is one in one plastic satchel and anything to do with an, um, anything else is another so it's just a little bit extra waterproofing um, you know this is the first time I, I think on my whole trip I actually got stopped and they actually took a took a bit of a deep look at the, over the bike and all that sort of stuff but he was he was pretty friendly it was just a bit of a pain you know I mean I'm going at three times the speed here um, so it was probably about a 10 minute stop. Um, he had no need to do it, but you know, just take your time, you smile and you're happy. I mean, you've, got, you've done nothing wrong anyway, so there's nothing really to be worried about. Um, I have heard stories about some people um, getting, into, uh, getting into some issues in, in different places where the, um, they basically started, you know, they, they were obviously trying to get some money out of you. So they were saying, oh, where's your, um, where, where's your warning sign? So if, if you break down in a lot of these countries, you've got to have like a little triangle to put by it. I, did, I, I, I had one, but I ended up ditching it once I got to uh, Cartagena because it was just a little bit of extra weight that I wanted to get rid of. Um, but uh, yeah. A little bit of a pain, but you know, you, you just got to put up with it. It only happened a few times on my whole trip where I actually had to get off the bike. If they ask you for your stuff, get off your bike. You know, don't just sort of sit there on your bike and give it to them. Get off your bike. And, you know, the thing about it is, you want them to think that they're in complete control and they're they're the powers. You know, so you just got to basically uh, roll with it with them. Um, yeah, but I. I this type of riding is basically from here on in. Is the, this is the type of riding you're doing? You're not you're not on big long freeways, and it's so much fun, you know. Um, it, you know, you're basically just at cruising speed. You're not trying to break any world records um, uh, because you're just trying to enjoy the ride, you know. And you can be doing like, you know, 50 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour, 65 mile an hour, pretty much all the way. Um, and which is about 65 to 100 k's an hour. Uh, 50 is around about 80, 80 something. Um, so it's, or 50 is actually 80, I think, direct on. Um, but yeah, just taking your time. And what I love so much about these roads is, you know, if you go on freeways, like in the US, Australia and all that, you skip all the towns. But with these sort of roads, you're going through every town and it's just a really nice break. And every now and then you come across a beautiful town on a hilltop and you think, oh, I'm gonna stop here, you know? Um, and you know, we, the, the mountains here, and unfortunately the video doesn't really uh, uh, show it. I, I wonder one day whether a camera can actually see what you're seeing that gives it a lot more depth um, because you know, you're going up pretty high in these mountains but you can't really see it from there. Um, and some of, the, some of the videos that I did where I was in Peru and places like that where you're just going up massive high mountains and you're just like straight down drops and it's just amazing. On the video it still looks cool but nowhere near as cool as what it is in real life. So the other the other things are you, every little town you go through you're going to come across topes which are speed humps. Uh, 
you, you've basically got to treat each, each one individually because some of them are really cruisy and you can probably sit down your bike. Most of the time I just got heels up and you know just got a couple inches off the seat um, and went over them. Um, and that's about the only time you really, really want to obey the speed limits. I mean, out of all the accidents I saw, everything happened around a town. Every single accident that I was uh, that I witnessed, um, including a, a pretty bad fatality, um, was was in and around a town. And as you can see, I'm overtaking a truck again because they go really slow once they get to these. Um, and in and around towns, we'll have lots of these little mopeds. Um, and even the, the Indian and Chinese make model bikes, Vaha bikes, uh, Baja, or whatever they call them. And they can't go very fast, so they just sit to the side of the road. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, even though it looks like I'm going pretty quick here, I'm, I'm going very slow. Um, yeah, so I well, it's going to talk to you about um, my, my cameras. This, this is another town. At, the, I didn't. I didn't actually stop him, but there's there a lot of activity in this town. I think this is the one. There was a whole heap of people at one stage. They're all pretty, pretty rough towns. You know, they're they're not. Uh, there's nothing really pretty unless you get into the real mountain top on the sides of the mountains, and you get a lot of them as you get get going further south. But you can usually tell where a good place to eat. Um, I don't. I never really ate at the roadside stops, at like the the restaurants and stuff like that. Most of the time, I just uh, it was a little like hut that someone had set up. That was where the best food was all the time. So, going to talk to you about my cameras and, and what what I what cameras I use. So on my helmet, I'm using uh, the Ghost S. Um, the problem was is that, uh, and I've mentioned this in previous videos was the mic, I bought a third party mic, I bought a few of them and tested them out and when I was here in Miami the Sony mic, mic uh, worked quite well but for some reason after a couple of uses it just started crackling all the time and so the, the noise was just, um, you couldn't, you, I mean if I had it turned on you'd be just so annoyed with it you know, um, but it's, uh, it wasn't good and, and it wasn't until I got to Cartagena where I actually got a uh, proper, uh, proper mic um, the, not the proper mic, but a, a mic direct from the manufacturer, which is uh, Drift Innovations. So Drift Innovations camera, it's a really good camera for this type of thing. It's low profile, so it actually sits on your helmet. It doesn't stand out so much like a GoPro does. And I was always a bit wary of filming people with the GoPro um, because it's so obvious that you're filming. Uh, while with the Drift, you know, they can't tell. And the other great thing about the Drift so the drift camera, the battery inside the camera will last you about three hours. The remote control lasts around about six hours, which which is really annoying. And and the thing the thing that I if, if I was making a camera, um, I would have like an eight hour battery in the camera. I would increase the frame rates at at uh, at uh, HD at the HD level as much as I possibly could. Um, and just work on the image sensors and stuff like that to be the best motorcycle uh, camera uh, and GoPro probably is the best um, but to be the best uh, camera it's all about it's all about everything being easy and none of them are easy no. so as an example you shoot a video um, and basically on this trip I've, on this one trip here I've shot about about 15 20 videos for the day um, the battery logs out at about three hours um, and then at the end of the day you've got all these videos that you've then got to upload or save to your computer and stuff like that you know the real problem is is that there's no easy way of doing it and if the microphone set up on the drift was really good which it is with it does sound pretty good with the um, with the uh, with the uh, manufacturer one the drift innovations uh, um, uh, mic but it, there's real that's where all the work's got to be done with the sound I mean you know if you're using a GoPro you've usually got to get the center the center mount in the back uh, uh, to to use the center and apparently that works pretty well and there's a couple of a guy Alex Chacon, he he, he used it well well and he his works pretty well um, but it's always an add-on and it's such a silly thing you know you should be able to have a helmet in your mic that's wireless uh, a mic in your helmet sorry that's wireless 
and you can just record the, the, the video and it sounds great on top of the video. Um, and then you wouldn't have to, you know, the, the post the post editing wouldn't have to be so uh, bad. You know, what would be great is, is if you shoot the video, like this, just say this one here is a four or five minute video. You shoot the video with the sound and then you save it. And then on your, on your device, you can just edit the start and the finish. So you can just move out the, a little bit, just do something really quickly and then be able to upload directly from the phone. The Drift Innovations, um, uh, app is just terrible. It's not, not even worth using, um, and I don't use it. Uh, trying to work it out was a nightmare, but it was just such a poor execution. Um, but the camera, I think, is the best. At the moment, it's probably the best camera for motorbike riding in, in, in when you're going through poorer countries because it's not standing out. I can st stop on the side of the road and chat to people, and they don't even know I'm filming them. Um, but like with the Go, GoPro, it's like they were always looking at you. You, you know, I, I, I met a couple of guys with their GoPro, and that you know they, they they tell me you know that people always see see the GoPro, and they're always worried about leaving the helmet on their bike because the GoPro stands out so much. Um, yeah, and you know, fair enough too. Um, it, it's I mean, but if I was to make a choice, even now at the end of this trip, I'd still stick with the Drift uh, Ghost. I've got my GoPros with me as well. Um, the drift uh, at, at HD at the highest level, which I think is about 1920, um, the drift uh, has a lot smaller file size. For some reason, it's a lot smaller. And really, the image quality, you can't really tell the difference, really, you know, at that, at that height, at that speed. Uh, um, they've got a new one, a 4K one coming out shortly, and um, I'm sure that's going to be a great, there's some army guys there. Um, I'm sure that's going to be a good camera, but what I'm more interested in, and the only reason I'll buy it is if they've improved the sound, the sound quality from and the mic setup, and also the frame rates at lower res, because you, I'll hardly shoot at 4K. And that's mainly because, that's mainly because the, um, yeah, it's just such a large file size, and when you're traveling, you're not going to have that uh, chance. But I might change my mind later on. There might be another camera that comes out. But Drift, as an example, if they just made their cameras for motorbike riders, snow, uh, uh, snow, whatever, snow riders or whatever they are, those those machines, and, and stuck to a few things, they could just be the best at that. And that's all they'd need to be to be a massively popular com company. They're probably going to go like every other com company and try to be everything to everybody, which I just don't think works. There's there's millions of, uh, you know, if, if you could get a setup correctly and then you could work with third parties like Cena and Uclear to connect. So if you've already got a Uclear mic or a Cena mic, you can actually do a Bluetooth connection to your to your camera and be able to record voice through those through those things would be just fantastic, you know, to make making your life so much easier would be the smart thing to do but obviously they won't do that you know and I, I, I you know I, I really liked the drift ghost because it was strong at the it, it wasn't too bad in the wet it still got some I mean the GoPro in the wet with the case on it is just I mean you just don't know and then it can fog up now, all these different things can happen at the end of your trip your image you your video is sort of ruined um, but you know, it's, it's it's up to you. If you want the best quality, you go with a GoPro. You know, um, as simple as that. But the the difference is not is pretty negligible as far as for, for motorbike riding at the at the lower lower uh, lower resolutions and higher frame rates. I, I don't think you can tell the difference. As you can see, everything's motorbikes in these countries. Most of the mechanics are you know. They just sell crap on the side of the road, but most of, most of the mechanics are um, in the town. You'll see lots of motorcycle mechanics, and you know they're all pretty cool. These guys are pretty cool, they're laughing at my bike. Um, but this is the sort of sights you'll see a lot going through towns, and I prefer this 50 times over going than uh, than just having a highway that just bypasses all the towns. 
eventually as com countries grow up like Ecuador and, and uh, Chile and stuff like that, they build highways that bypass all the towns, which is, I can understand it from a freight point of view, but not from a, um, not from a, uh, um, not from a user, like a, like a, a traveler's point of view, you want to go through the small towns, you know. And there's usually a lot of military around and in these countries they all had shotguns and stuff like that, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was the, the helmet cam was the drift drift ghost. And then I had, I used, for, for some of the videos on the side of the bike, I used the GoPro. And the setup I use is, uh, on my helmet, just got the normal attachments, but on the, uh, you know, I've got RAM mounts, which are expensive, but they're easily the best. You know, I've got a whole heap of attachments, so I can have them. I can have a camera facing in the rear. If I'm riding with somebody else a couple of times, it's good, you know, for them to get some. It's very rare that you get footage of yourself riding, unless you want to be a little bit of a wanker and set the motorcycle up, uh, set the camera up on the side of the road, then go around the corner, then go back and get the camera. Which, you know, when you when you've been doing this for, for as long as I have, and and um, you see other videos of people doing it, you know what that's that's what they've done, and it looks pretty cool, you know, at times, but. It's basically taking half, it'll take a half an hour to get one shot. Um, and I did a few of them. I did a few of them in Ecuador and Peru and in Patagonia, because it was just nice. But So the second thing I have right behind me, I had a tripod right on, on, on my back, just against the, the back case. I had a tripod on top of the bag. And so whenever I stopped, I usually, used to, as I've said in previous video, videos, I always like to stop on where you know buy something to eat or drink and then look for somewhere really cool to stop and then i just set the gopro up to in video and photo mode so it's taking a photo every five ten seconds and then i just forget about it and just eat my food and stuff like that and at the end of it i might have like a hundred photos and two or three really cool ones you know and it's usually when i have really good views that i did that and uh so I had the GoPro already set up on that. All I had to do was turn it on and press press play and then just set it up and point it towards me where I was going. And then I basically forgot about it until I was ready to go. Then I picked it, turned it off, picked it, picked it up, went back. Um, the other cameras I have, um, when I was doing off-roading, I was using um, the uh, TG Tracker from Olympus, um, which is another camera. I had a couple of these and they're Wet weather cameras, they're fantastic. They're sh they're, they've got shock uh, image stabilizer, sh they're shock proof. You can drop them from a meter. I've dropped them, dropped them a couple of times and they just keep going and you can, they're waterproof out of the box so you don't have to put any cases or anything like that on them. If you're going to go underwater, there's a little thing you put on uh, on top of the on top of the um, the lens, but that's it. That, that's all you need to do and that's pretty fantastic. And so when, and the thing that was great about it, I, in Puerto Rico, I did uh, some mud trails uh, on the on, on the GS800, and um, had them set up on the side of the bike, and they went underwater a couple of times because I was going through like really deep knee knee deep mud and stuff like that, the water, and it was freaking awesome. But the, it actually the, washed off the. There was only a couple of videos of that on that trip that actually had the. Um, had the, had water spots on them. It just washes off it. It's quite quite amazing, and you, you you wouldn't do that. You you would have to keep checking the camera and wiping it clean. Um, the other thing I had um, on on my tank bag, I had a little rag. So every now and then, I whenever I'd stop, I'd just wipe the lens clean. So th actually, this is coming out of so you're going up a really steep climb. There's a lot of roadworks going on, and I actually nearly friggin' screwed up bad here trying to get up the inside of a truck. I don't know if you'll see it, but you, you end up doing this quite a lot and I ran out of room. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a very smart idea and basically had to stop. I think I had to stop the bike because otherwise I was going to hit the truck. Um, so you just got to pick your places. I'm not sure if I got it on video. Hopefully I did when I screw up. But right now I'm going out of a, going out of a small town, a reasonable sized town actually. and. Uh, yeah, we're up pretty high here. You can't really tell from this, but up, up very high. And uh, yeah, so the other camera I had, then then I had a, I've got an Air Dog drone, and I'm going to talk about the review, do my review on that later on. I'm going to do a review at the uh, uh, later on with all of them, and I'm, I'm also excited that I'm going to be doing interviews with uh, with a whole heap of riders that I met along the way, 
and talk to them about their trip, their setup, their bikes, etc., etc. Et um, and uh, but I, but the air dog, I had a I had a drone as well, which at the two most critical places I wanted it to work, it wouldn't work. And it's a finicky thing. Like it's a, it was a Kickstarter campaign uh, drone. It's a fa it's called, it's a follow drone, follow you drone. So basically, you set it all up, uh, and you've got a wrist device that that connects to it. Uh, they think it's some sort of special connection, but it's just a pretty basic connection. They call it uh, air leash um, that it connects to it. Um, connects pretty well when there's no there's no overcover, so there's no trees or anything like that. But it will lose connection. So you know if you've got trees that are the smart thing to do is to look okay. Like as an example, when we're in uh, on doing Death Road. Um, there was trees, but the canopy was at a certain height. So I just set the drone to be at a certain height above the canopy and to sit on the right side of me, about 20 meters behind me, um, and but it wouldn't fly. It would connect to the uh, satellites and then it would just have another error come up and then you'd have to go through the setup process again. And we tried that for about 30 to 45 minutes and then just gave up. It was just fruitless and it was really frustrating because that was one of the places we wanted to get some amazing footage, you know, and really frustrating that it just didn't work down. The other place it didn't work, it just wouldn't fly was uni as well, the salt flats, and that was frustrating as well, and especially because it was so hot and windy and and uh, and where we were getting it set up to, to start with was, um, you know, it wasn't on the salt flats and it just wouldn't fly. So frustrating, it, you know, I got, it, I got it to, you know, four or five times on the trip, I got it to run and fine, and then it just wouldn't run. So, very, very frustrating. Um, the next trip I probably won't use the air dog unless it improves dramatically. Um, and hopefully they don't release a new air dog. They just make this one, continually make this one better. I've got no idea where I'm going here, but I sort of decided I'll just follow the traffic uh, <laughs> to get out of here, but you never, you, you never know. The GPS sort of tells you where you've got to go to and it just keeps telling you rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. And then you just sort of treat, follow where all the, most of the traffic's going. Usually you follow the trucks, but... Yeah, so a lot of the times you're coming into towns and you're going to these steep inclines and... Um, that's pretty cool. I love riding through this sort of stuff, you know. And I usually stop in some places like this if I see some, like a bunch of uh, food off the road, you know. Uh, Anyway, so, yeah, so I had the air dog drone. So the TG trackers are from Olympus. I would highly recommend them. I think they're fantastic cameras. Hopefully they make uh, a new version and just keep making it better because I really love those cameras and I use them a lot, especially uh, as I went down south. And they've got a wide angle, 180 degree view. So it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool uh, device and it's shockproof, waterproof, also has tracking so it can get uh, uh, GPS where you are, locationing. All that sort of stuff so yeah so yeah so I, sp I spent a few days here um, on coming into uh, getting closer to Antigua now um, but I spent a couple of days uh, here in Antigua um, I'm trying to think do I have another oh, so I have my Olympus I have my Olympus uh, DSLR as well the um, OMD EM1 uh, which is a great camera, but I ended up ditching that again for weight because the lenses and I wasn't using it anywhere near as much as I wanted to. So, uh, here I go again. I mean, I am going a lot slower than what it looks like here, so um, I wouldn't recommend doing this everywhere or doing it at speed, but if, you, if you're just going at a reasonable pace, you're fine, you know, you just got to be careful of people selling stuff on the side of the road. And buses, just the shit that comes out of the buses. So, you know, it's incredible. I thought I'd just sit behind here, otherwise, I might get into trouble from the other three guys. I ended up being stuck behind them for quite a while, actually. So, yeah, so, and, and other than that, just, you know, I mean, I use Google Photos so to back everything up. So basically, if I import anything, the, the other camera I had too was the Samsung 360, which I absolutely love. Uh, a great camera and easy, you know, there's just no editing to do. Basically, you shoot it, turn it on, and then you can 
in at the start because usually you've got your hand on the screen to, to turn it on and off at the end and you can just get it both of them to save it to your phone and then you can just upload it directly. Freaking amazing how it should be done. Unfortunately there's no, you know, the sound is on its crap, you can't connect to the sound. Uh, that would be something that I'd be doing if I were them too, but they won't. Um, and they've got a new version of that out now. It's a completely different thing. Um, but it was a real solid thing. I dropped it a couple of times and it kept going. Um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, say so the Samsung thing. But the other thing that I use is Google Photos. And you, it, this is an absolute must. You know, if you're going to be shooting videos and photos, you can put, I've got everything so beautifully organized. Um, so I've got, I've got albums for every single day and I upload the photos at the end of the day and, and if I can't upload the videos, I just save them into a folder and then I upload them into that album uh, when I get, got, get the chance and it's just fantastic. Uh, uh, it's easily the best photo app. Your, your Apple Photos is crap compared to it, just complete crap. And I've used both and, and I've got now probably about over one terabyte of uh, videos and photos and. Um, and maybe a hundred thousand photos in there, all nicely, neatly catalogued into albums, so I know exactly where they are. And you can go through and you can edit the albums, you can delete, you, you can share them, you can edit the photos on, on your desktop, even on your phone, you can do some pretty cool stuff as well. Uh, yeah, so anyway, just a little bit about Antigua. Really beautiful, beautiful colonial city, absolutely gorgeous city. Um, very leafy and I stayed in a really nice place just for a couple of nights. This is when the election was on too, when uh, uh, when Trump, uh, 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 Donald Trump became president. And uh, and I, I, I basically, I was I just remember sitting in the bedroom looking at it and thinking, oh, well, if, if Hillary Clinton can't win, uh, if Hillary Clinton can't win Florida, which it didn't look like she was going to, she's definitely not gonna win the election. And basically I turned it off once I realized that uh, that wasn't going to happen. Not that I'm a fan of hers, because I'm not uh, a great fan of really any politician. I think Barack Obama was was just a good guy and did whatever he thought was best for his side of politics. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I knew basically by that that, that Donald Trump was going to be president, and um, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't really worry me. He can't do much um, anyway. Um, so there, yeah, this is the place I stayed at. Really beautiful place. Um, it's like a, um, it's a tea and coffee plantation. Right below, you could hear the, mount, the, the volcanoes crackling in the background. And I used this as a base for a few days. So yeah, any questions or comments below guys? Thank you.